One of the most famous monuments of Armenian architecture, Kakashen St. Grigor, is situated in the area between Surp Arakelos Church and the Pahlavuni's residence, not far from the verge of Tzakot Scorch in the northwest part of Ani, called New City. The foundations of the monument were laid in the year 1000. Its construction lasted for over two decades, almost parallel with that of the cathedral but it was completed later, approximately in the year 1020. The fulfillment of this magnificent undertaking, as well as the construction of the cathedral, were entrusted to architect Tartat. The Bagratid King of Kings, Gagik I, who had ordered the erection of this monument, wanted it to be a recreation of the composition of the 7th century Church of Zvartnots, which had already collapsed by that time. The plan and composition of Gagkashin showed that this brilliant specialist had perfect knowledge of the building secrets of Zvartnots, the only, then already non-existent specimen of that composition representing a central domed tetraconch of three tiers that were circular outwardly and cruciform inwardly. Unlike Zvartnots, in Gakashen, the architect increased the number of the outer facets, 36 instead of 32, reduced that of the entrances, 3 instead of 5, made the windows narrower and simplified certain details. As for the style of the door and the window frames and the general ornamentation of the monument, Tartat gave preference to the artistic trends of his times and decorated Kakashen with only ornamental patterns. In contrast to it, in Zvartnos the capitals of the pillars are enriched with eagle reliefs, its decoration also comprising reliefs of animals and armed men. The foundations of the church were laid in the year 1000. Unfortunately, the available archive documents give only scanty information relating to its construction process. The only exception is an unfinished inscription from the year 1013, which is engraved on a pillar south of the sanctuary in commemoration of the completion of one of the stages of construction. It can be translated as the following. In 1013, these arches were completed. The construction of Gagashen continued for over two decades and it was completed around the year 1020. However, within 10 to 12 years, some dangerous cracks appeared in the walls and pillars of the newly erected monument, the result of certain building errors made by Tertat. In order to prevent the impending collapse, it was decided to strengthen the inner arcade of Kakashen, which was its more vulnerable part. These efforts secured the future safety of the monument to some extent, but time showed that they only prolonged the existence of the church for only half a century. Even in that state, Kakashen was still mostly preserved standing with the exception of its western wall. Its inner eastern part was used as a chapel. It was separated from the ruined section of the church by a wall erected between them. All of these actions proved only a temporary remedy for the monument the condition of which was getting worse with every single passing day. Eventually, it proved impossible to prevent what was inevitable and Gagashen was totally reduced to ruins. The excavations that started in the remnants of the monument in 1905 under Nicholas Mars' supervision unearthed crumbled human bones, which shows that the final fall of Gagashen was unexpected. Most probably, it was destroyed by an earthquake. The archaeological finds include several church utensils and a copper chandelier. The greatest archaeological find unclosed by the aforementioned excavations, which lasted until 24 August 1906, was the broken stone statue of King of Kings Gakik I Bakratunit, holding the model of the church in both his hands. The fragments of the statue, which had originally been set in the northern side of the church, were moved to the Museum of Ani, where they were collected together. This find attracted much attention, 
but its most detailed description is provided by architect Toramanian. The statue has a height of about 2 meters 20 centimeters. His head is covered with a white royal turban, which was generally worn by the caliphs of Baghdad. His long black hair almost falls down to his shoulders in strands, being curled upwards in the old Sassanid manner. He has a broad face, big eyes and thick eyebrows, with his black mustache twirled upwards and partly merged into his thick beard, which covers more than half of his chest. But for this cross, it would be impossible not to take this Christian king for a Muslim monarch. The king's statue was kept in the Museum of Ani for about 12 years, until its destruction during the Turkish invasion of the city. Nobody heard anything of it until 1994, when Georgian researcher Georgi Kaftaratze found one of its fragments in the Museum of Erzurum. The employees of this establishment considered it part of a fish or a lion sculpture. Due to their state of utter neglect that has continued for more than a century now, today, the condition of the ruins of Kakashian St. Gregor Church is even worse than after their unclosing in 1906. However, even in this state, the king's church amazes visitors and imbues them with veneration, proving that the spiritual influence of the Armenian architectural genius is perpetual. Thank you.